Hello, everybody, and welcome to our third and final adventure of the evening, uh, which I've entitled Samurai Llama Scorpion Stag, which a select number of people uh, will understand probably already. Uh, and before we get into it, as always, we are going to introduce our heroes. Uh, so first up, we have Othgerert Chariergix, the Lord of Bone. Othgerert, hello. Hello. Uh, how do you uh, how do you fare? How has your new life as a, a myth tier adventurer been treating you? I have been getting my new estate in order. Hmm. Uh, have many craftsmen been making the pilgrimage to uh, work in and forge within your uh, within your forge? I suspect there are there will be many more to come than are here now. But already some have arrived. Yes, that is, and I uh, have been sharing with them my knowledge my ways of work, and learning their ways of work from them. It has been very you. enlightening. Uh, Sorry. Um, no, no problem. It's my fault as well. Uh, and Othgert, is there are there any like interesting new techniques that you have picked up from some of the uh, the visitors to your... Uh, what is the name of your home? Or what would you call it? Your forge? Is that the right term? For the time being, we have taken to call it the Ivory palace mm. and have you um have you picked anything particular up anything that you've been you know any new products that you've created or or you know works of art uh, since it's uh, it's opening from many of the smiths to come into my halls i have begun to learn the art of metalworking mm. something that i was very reluctant towards at first but there is a time and a place for all knowledge. Indeed, and well, as much as it goes against your own taste to an extent, the ability to fold metal is a valuable tool for any craftsman. Yes. Uh, welcome back, Odgurn. I'm glad things are proceeding well for you. The only other thing of note that has happened is that a fan of mine, I think... Oh, really? Glazia has delivered a package to my door. A new hammer. A very unique hammer. Seems the perfect tool for the craftsman. I think it may very well be. Uh, Ulgurt, I'm glad to hear that you've, uh, well, found yourself a new tool. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Of course. Uh, and next, we have Returning once more, Anna Dolce Bluebeads, Infectious Porcelain Princess, and the Queen of Dolls. Hello, Anna Dolce. Greetings. Uh, you too are um, still, I imagine, adjusting to the uh, the new accommodations that you're finding for yourself as a, uh, a myth to your adventures. Indeed. Uh, sometimes I even get a little bit lost within it. I'm sure. Uh, over time, it will be uh, become like a home to you. How was uh, how are the kids and how are uh, how is sugar adjusting? Uh, they love the place. I mean, <laughs> it, the the triplets seem to enjoy riding on the backs of the larger blink dogs. <laughs> uh, I'm glad. I hope they're not blinking while the kids are on them. I imagine they'd fall off. Oh no, uh, we uh, they're pretty much well trained uh, according to confection. Though I will say, I am. So happy to get my blue eyes again. Uh, your eyes are back to being blue again. Yes, uh, uh, thankfully, I met someone who knew of a ritual to pretty much separate Imalis from myself, and well, she's now, uh, Imalis is gone, uh, Twizar is along with her, and now they're, well, you're not bothering me, so. It's good to hear that you are in a much better place than you were. I know things were getting very uh, stressful for you there at the end, but it seems like things have calmed down a bit, at least for the time. Yes, though, I, I do have to say that Malice wasn't very keen on being inside a doll-bound body, because uh, there was no other way for me to give her a body. Um, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, it's good that, um, well, again, for the time being, at least, it seems like that is relatively resolved. Welcome yes. back, Anadolsha. Good to see you once more. Thank you so much. Of course. Uh, and next up, uh, almost the whole crew from uh, the most recent 
uh, boss battle. Uh, we have Nigel Estrada, the Dread Emperor. Nigel, how goes the campaign? It is going quite well, Pete. Uh, any um, any large advances on the uh, on the front? Currently working on establishing a southern front. That seems to be quite interesting. Hopefully, we'll have a bit more territory for. Well, I hear they say it's quite lovely down there in the fall. Hopefully, we'll be seeing that rather soon. Uh, I hope only for your success. Uh, and on a more personal level, how are you? How are you? Uh, how are you finding your new home? I suppose temporarily. Although I don't know if you intend to make that your home forever. It is quite pleasant here. We actually had a few upstarts a little reluctant to accept their new management. But one of the finer things of Bartholomew's troop is uh, the benefits of the contract. I never thought that I'd be able to uh, take an assassin out a tower window with me, regardless of how stoic and uh, warrior-like they may seem in the shadows. They all uh, cry in fear as they play. I have no doubt that well, I would expect nothing less from the Dread Emperor. Uh, Nigel, I'm glad to see that you're here, that you're adjusting well. Oh, welcome back, Nigel. And last but not least, we have joining us tonight Sword Cohere. Sword, how are you? Um, about as usual, uh, about my usual self. Um, that's good to hear. Um, Tell me, uh, what's what's been new in kind of your uh, what's been new in your life, sort? I'm afraid not much. I've been mm. preoccupied with trying to catch up on my research in uh, Central City, and like always, I get lost. As you've been sort of catching up on some of that research in Central City, sort of co here, you of course are of Azamar blood. Uh, and I'm correct. Yes, uh, and the Asimar people, um, there's one thing that is known. From the time that an Asimar is born, they hear in their head the voice of the gods, of their patron, of their, of their deity, uh, and it guides them and, and tells them kind of what to do and, and reaches them towards their ultimate destiny and their quests and their future. Uh, and many Asimar choose to follow this voice, others choose to forsake it. But it speaks to you nonetheless. And since, Sword, you have left your home, it hasn't been probably speaking to you quite so much. Not as much as it did when you were well, still a child. But recently, Sword, in your research in those late nights, as you're sleeping, you've been having village uh, visions of your village. You've been seeing the sight of Styx, just a small, humble town in the deserts of Alabama. And Sword, for the first time in a long time, you've heard the voices call. It's spoken to you. Sword! 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 We need you now, Sword! Please come home, Sword! We need you! How does Sword react to hearing this, uh, as it's been just kind of speaking to you in your mind at nights? Uh, kind of been wondering if I've uh, been staying up too. Um, you, yeah, you, you've been you've been hearing this voice, and it's it's been calling out to you. And yeah, you, you're certain that it's not just, um, you're certain that it's not just the uh, the wind, or perhaps not entirely, or you know, maybe just your dreams or remembering what it was like when you were a kid. Uh, but yeah, this voice is is very deeply familiar uh, in some way, but. For the most part, you've been kind of uh, shrugging it off until one day within your home uh, and kind of in your uh, in your research within your kind of mobile home, um, Bartholomew appears at the door and speaks to you. Um, a sword, um, I, uh, well, I was needed to speak to you directly on a particular matter. I, I received a job request um, and that uh, job request uh, came from some town called uh, Sticks. It's in the deserts of Alabama. I'm 
Uh, I've never been there myself. You know, it, it registers a bit on the memory, but I have never actually been there. Uh, they requested you specifically. Uh, I, I tried to tell them that uh, for such a small town, myth tier adventurers were very hard to come by and expensive, but apparently they insisted that, well, it be you uh, among whatever myth tier crew that we choose to send out. So um, I thought I'd bring this request to you personally, as it seems to be the only way they'll even uh, work with our adventuring troop on this. Huh. What does the quest entail? Um, they've been um, relatively um, vague about it. Apparently there's been trouble with uh, someone by the name of Lance. Uh, not silver, not the silver blood, uh, Lance. Not your um, your compatriot. A, a different oh, Lance. Oh Lord! What did he do this time? Oh, so you do know this individual? Um, of course, he's my brother. Oh, family. Um, well, well, I suppose that this would be a, a good quest for you to go on. In that case, um, uh, don't let your personal uh, judgment uh, cloud your uh, well business acumen. In this case, but uh, will you accept this quest, sir? I suppose I will. My sister-in-law would like a word with him if he, she ever gets the chance. Anyway, so kill two birds with one stone. Um, uh, very well. Uh, in that case, um, your, uh, the rest of your compatriots, I believe I've already sent away. I've put together a um, powerful group to uh, tackle this task, uh, but it seems that you have some personal knowledge, so you may want to help them in that regard. Um, without further ado, and Bartholomew snaps his fingers, and all of a sudden, Sword Co. here for the first time in a very long time, um, a place that you've been avoiding, really, uh, you return home. You stand, and around you, um, you can see your uh, three other of your compatriots, Anna Dolsha, Othgerert, uh, Nigel, you've already been kind of teleported to the summoning circle. Uh, here on the uh, outskirts of town, the wind whips, the air is very hot. Uh, you stand within the deserts of Alabama. Um, in the distance, you can see the uh, the small huts uh, and buildings that make up the town of Styx, Sword Cohere's hometown. And rising somewhat, uh, anachron somewhat an anachronism in the space, uh, a huge church, a temple uh, dedicated to well, whatever God is presumably the god of Sword Coheter's people, um, much larger and more grandiose than the small town surrounding it. Um, the four of you now stand here on the outskirts. Um, I think the three of you uh, haven't been filled in perhaps in quite as much detail as Sword, and uh, Sword arrives on the scene. Bartholomew kind of told you that uh, Sword might fill you in on a few things when he arrived. So what do you all do? Anadosh is just like... like flapping her hand so fast you can actually hear the porcelain like kind of clink uh uh as does like why is it so hot oh my poor lady Miles. have you this never seen a desert before i've never even been to one well this is going to be an experience is this truly the right place other than the cathedral if it looks almost as though our commission it's more than this entire town as well. Well, you'd be correct. Uh, this is my home. I don't know how much Bartholomew filled, uh, filled you in on, but apparently the uh, temple elders had requested my presence along with you all for some reason. And that'd uh, probably be the optimal place to head to. Is all right. In that case, you begin stepping forth uh, across the sands. The uh, the desert winds, as I said, blow hot upon your faces uh, as you walk toward Styx. Uh, and as you're getting closer, um, you're all looking at this cathedral, and from a distance, just an impressive in size, uh, this temple. Um, but it seems to be one single matte color, which is much different. It seems to be just entirely white. Uh, which this is certainly not. It was just made of kind of a, a rough-hewn stone uh, previously, is, is from what you remember of its sword. It wasn't this just single color. You're also not seeing any of the beautiful stained glass windows that used to adorn the outside of it, uh, or really anything. It's just covered over in white, almost like a great sheet has been placed over it, um, one that kind of fits to its form. Uh, and as you walk, you can see there are a number of people. Uh, you crest into the village, 
there are a number of people kind of standing, just kind of looking on at this great temple, just in sort of confusion and in awe. Um, and you approach, uh, and you can see in kind of a great, uh, uh, you can see in kind of the robes of, uh, well, the priest of this particular, uh, of this particular temple. Um, you can see a figure, recognize it as a, a great minotaur, uh, who turns around and looks towards you. Uh, and as he uh, sees you approaching, sword and friends, sword, I'm so glad you were able to make it home. Uh, and he steps forward and kind of offers uh, one of his hands in a handshake. He stands very tall, uh, large even for a minotaur. It's been a long time, Elder. Uh, it has indeed. Well, we've heard news of your uh, travels about the land. I know that, well, what you do out there, you do it for us, uh, to keep us out of the, well, the watchful eyes of the, the people, the, the guards that would come and well, ransack our town if they knew about your brother and the, some of the things that he has done. We thank you, and we're sorry that we have called you home now, but we need your help. We will need all of your help. Uh, and he kind of looks past to the, the group of you. Um, the temple... It has been, well, sealed in some strange way. I must assume that it is the power of, well, our deity, the ninja camel spider moose. Uh, what do you say, you say? Why would he seal the temple, though? Well, this was, I believe, a result of your brother's actions. He has always been mischievous, you know. However, recently, he got up to... Um, well, I don't know what kind of trouble he might have been in, but he thought it wise to steal our holy relic from the top in the center. The great antler, uh, the great antlers that rested atop the statue of the ninja camel spider moose that stood behind the podium. I was within the church at the time, and I tried to stop him. I did not know the power, it seems, that they contained, for as he removed them from the statue, the statue itself, it exploded and a great creature emerged forth, but it, it was not uh, the ninja camel spider moose. It was something else, something foul and dark. It, it moved, it, it destroyed the, the altar. It dragged your brother down with it, along with the antlers that, I don't know what power it was that kept it there. Uh, I fleed from the temple uh, and not long after, these great webs, they appear to be spider webs, curled up and around, uh, sealing the temple. I have not been able to gain entry. No one has. Where did it flee? Well, to here, outside of the temple. The only ones left within are that creature and El, your brother. I assume that our de deity saw it fit to protect the town by trapping it within inside. Huh. This is most disturbing. I don't know how one would get in. The strings, the scorpions, or, I'm sorry, the uh, the spider's threads, they're as hard as steel. Uh, no axe would be able to pierce it, from what we could tell, at least. I don't suppose there's an opening underneath the old labyrinth, is there? The, uh, the labyrinth beneath... Um, as far as I'm aware, uh, it is, uh, well, the only entrances were coming were from within the temple itself. Although you may, um, I don't believe there's a way to take the labyrinth, uh, at least from this side. You'd have to go through the temple first. Hmm. I do remember, and he thinks for a while as he's a minotaur, he goes, I do remember all of the labyrinth. I am actually certain that there is no way. Uh, there is a secret hatch you might use, however. Um, and he kind of tells you the location of um, one of the uh, the temples, uh, one of the, uh, the elders' kind of secret ways to kind of move one of the benches, and there's another kind of passage uh, deep into the bowels of the, uh, the under temple. I've heard of these things, but I've never quite seen them in person. Do any of you, and he kind of looks back, have any expertise or knowledge of Spider's Web? I know that this steps beyond its bounds. 
this was something created by gods. However, any information may help. Aside from usually being susceptible to fire, uh, I can't say I did. Hmm, yes, our flames have not been able to pierce it, but perhaps you might have luck. Uh, and he begins kind of stepping over towards, um, uh, he begins kind of stepping over to the temple. Um, yeah, uh, the crowd kind of parts. Uh, a lot of people are just kind of like staring and, and a few people kind of uh, say like short and brisk hellos to sword as he passes by. Um, a few like, uh, a few people just kind of like speak to him in kind of gratitude and almost reverence uh, as he steps past. Um, but um, yeah, the people here seem to have an immense amount of respect for him uh, as you guys kind of cross over to the temple. And uh, as you get up close, um, the uh, as you get up close, the um, minotaur, uh, the minotaur priest, kind of uh, walks over and kind of he taps at some of the strings that seem to be coming over where the temple door is. Uh, and the door is open. You can see where the doors are also covered in string, uh, but then there are strings that go down in front of where the um, the opening and the threshold is, uh, also covering that up. Uh, and he goes and kind of taps on it, and you hear them kind of ding, ding, almost like steel. Um, he goes, I, I cannot pass through. Uh, it will be uh, upon the group of you to find some way in. Uh, and he kind of takes a few steps back. Please, for, so... for your brother and for and for the ninja camel spider moose. He nods. Uh, I just, uh, quite like, these strings are like, how, like, how is, what's the spacing between them? Um, they are, um, do you kind of go up and, like, you go up and examine them pretty closely? Uh, yeah, I'll probably examine them, but I'll probably not touch them. Okay, I'll go ahead and make me an investigation check. Ten, um, as you're kind of looking over the strings, uh, the spacing—it's uh, an extremely dense weave. Um, you don't really notice too much else beyond that, um, but it, it's thick enough that you can't even see through anything. It, it's creating like a solid almost blanket over it. Um, no spaces. All right, so yeah, and those who won't be able to fit through the... Um, yeah, uh, yeah, no, unfortunately not. Um, some of the, um, I, I will say you notice this, um, some of the strings are arranged in, like, strange patterns. Like, it doesn't seem like the most efficient way to do it. It looks like there was some, like, intent in the way that the strings were kind of meshed around. Yeah, I'll, like, and those are probably, like, wave sort over and, like, let him look. Okay. Um, yeah, Sword, do you want to uh, make an investigation on check check on that? I'll give you advantage because uh, Anna Dulce is kind of helping you out. Uh, 17. Um, yeah, you're looking over and Anna Dulce, you kind of point out those um, intricate kind of um, uh, you, you kind of point out some of those like intricate weavings and Sword um, you recognize them uh, and anyone else I think who speaks the, langu uh, the language, I believe you speak the language Celestial, don't you Sword? As Naturally, Correct. as an Astor? Yes. Um, you see that there is a message here written in Celestial. Um, sort of, actually, I'm sorry, Frog. Did, did you speak Celestial? Uh, Anadolsha? No, Anadolsha does okay, not yeah. speak Celestial. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. I should have uh, asked first. Um, I mean, uh, if, uh, if I actually kept one to other uh, invocations, I probably would have been able to read. But no, not no longer, so... Uh, yes, in that case, Sword, you recognize um, characters uh, that are actually written to this in Celestial, uh, and they seem to read, only one who is four may pass. One who is four? Um, yeah, did you kind of like speak that out loud to everyone there? I don't suppose you have them to have a nephew or someone four years old or something <laughs> to that effect. Is that for the number four for something or for the warning you shout before something falls? Uh, sort of <laughs> tells you that it is for the number. Oh boy. 
Hmm, only well, one day. Four of us. Maybe all of us as a single entity? Well, I hope you have a extra, extra large trench coat. <laughs> um, I like where your, I like where your head's at. <laughs> I did not pack my extra, extra large trench coat today. I am sorry. Um, hmm. The um, the, the priest in the background kind of speaks up. Is that a something that you think that you would need for this? Some days um, you need very large trench coat, for it is very, very inclement weather. We, we, we do not have such a thing, but I can ask our, well, I can ask our town weaver to stitch something together if you would like. And I should probably turn to him and says, uh, well, how about a, do you have anything of, like, significant religious value that may be able to cover all of us? Um, you know, like a corporal of the, whatever this god of yours is? Uh, we can put together some of our vestments, and he's wearing kind of robes, uh, and you see, um, he starts to kind of disrobe uh, there. He's, he's wearing clothes underneath. Uh, and um, we'll combine two actual, well, I am actually a very uh, large creature. Do you think my own vestments would suffice? Uh, and yeah, he's, I mean, he is a large creature. He's a, a full, fully sized minotaur. Uh, so you guys could probably all, <laughs> you guys could probably all fit into this uh, one person's uh, priest vestments if you'd like. Well, we don't have many ideas, so let's give it a shot. Um, and Dosha and Lady Molly will probably like, ride on everyone else's back. Uh, all right, yeah, so what, what's the order? What's the stacking order as you guys are putting yourself together? I shall be the legs. <laughs> uh, Othgur, you take the you take the legs. Uh, who wants to go next? Well, uh, and also uh, being light will probably be the top, but she there's going to be needs of support for uh, Molly. Um, all right, yeah, you, uh, you and Molly kind of... Um, Basically, I think Molly probably climbs up, swords back, uh, and then rests you and uh, uh, and herself on sword's head. Uh, Nigel, you taking the arms? I suppose I'll be the torso on this route. All right, as you guys do the classic, uh, the classic bunch of people in a trench coat strategy, uh, and you kind of stack up, uh, and the, the the priest kind of puts the uh, the vestment over you. Uh, forming you into kind of one mega person, uh, and as you do so, uh, the <clears throat> um, you watch as these strings before you actually seem to react. Um, they begin to glow, uh, and sword. All of a sudden, just in your mind, you just hear kind of a piercing voice: "Sword, speak your name as four that are one." We are the Bartholomew Gang. We request entry into the temple. Uh, and <clears throat> you are each one, and you are four, four parts of the one. You must represent each of the four. Speak your name. Sword Coher. Sword, and this was kind of communicated to you in your mind, Sword. What, how do you like, what do you tell people that you're like hearing about? Right now, because it's probably a pretty strange experience. I I think it might be telling us that we need to speak as one, or speak at the same time and say our names, but perhaps the same name. Mm. So what are we supposed to call ourselves? Oath Gadolsha Kostrata? What if we are Sword Emperor Doll Lizard. And as soon as you say that, Oathgarart, the thing, <laughs> uh, the strings just kind of turn and pull aside, uh, revealing the entrance into the, uh, revealing the entrance into the temple proper. Uh, and 
Um, you see a lot of the strings that are just on the outside of the temple kind of uh, pull uh, pull down and recede, and the temple now just stands in its full glory. Um, you also see uh, the inside of it has been completely torn asunder. All of the kind of the pews and the uh, the altar, uh, the statue that you remember, sword that used to stand gloriously at the back, uh, depicting the uh, the ninja camel spider moose in all of its glory. Uh, has been smashed. The pieces of it are on the ground. You see near you, there's like a, a spider leg that's sitting there and a moose antler all carved from stone um, that are shattered across the floor. You see no signs of the ancient uh, moose antler relic, nor do you see, um, well, your brother or that creature that the, the priest des des uh, described. Uh, the priest just kind of kneels down, seeing the inside of his uh, temple uh, desecrated in this way, just kind of begins to pray. Please, he, he kisses down. Please find the, the creatures, the creature within. Stop it, sword, please. Ah, you have my word. All right. Um, you want to, uh, do you wish to step across the, um, uh, step across and into the, uh, the space? Uh, yes. All right. Um, so you begin, um, you can begin walking uh, forward and in, uh, and as I said, the, the temple is, is torn apart. You can see at the uh, at the kind of the back of the area, uh, there is a great kind of opening that's been just doof, smashed into the ground. You remember that this was the, uh, behind the altar, uh, was the true entrance into the labyrinth, the proper entrance, not the one that was described to you before by the priest, uh, and that is kind of revealed and opened. Uh, and Presumably, you can see uh, as you're walking down it what look like very fine cuts uh, into the wood, uh, very uh, into the uh, into the stone rather. Um, it looks like someone actually just like cut a sword through stone. Uh, it's presumably a, a feat of, of Herculean strength. Um, there's also just a strange kind of like uh, viscous fluid uh, that's kind of dotting the uh dotting the ground in places from around here uh and that's that's the space you're also kind of aware the pews have been completely destroyed uh so the little secret entrance into the labyrinth that your uh, priest was mentioning to you before um it is kind of uncovered and and kind of revealed over on the side of the room uh although you know you'd have to like lift up a little hatch for it but you know where it is and you can get at it pretty easily what do you guys want to do and also, just first look down towards Uthgur go, Sword Emperor Doll Lizard? <laughs> it sounded similar to the creature that rules this domain. Hmm. Okay, which that actually brings up another point. Sword, what yes. is the spider ninja camel moose? He's a deity who presides over the lands of the Alabama desert. He's highly revered in these areas. But what exactly, like, does he have, like, an appearance or something? Because that, that, what, I mean. Well, he did before the uh, statue was destroyed. Mm, oh, well. I think all this time that there was something sealed away in it. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, if we're all past, uh, like, into the, this cathedral now, and it also will just ride off of the uh, stack and just go there. All right, yeah. Um, I kind of in my mind, I assumed that you could already break it apart, but I guess you didn't say it. So you guys were just all walking around, still as as uh, a big pile. Uh, and so yeah, you you kind of climb down. Oh, you're still carrying up the weight. It's probably the people are probably starting to get at least a little bit heavy. Wait, do we not have to stay like this? I would assume not. We're past the the webbing now. Will the both of you please climb off of me? <laughs> <laughs> Very well. And it also, guess... like, while they're doing getting down, uh, and it's like looking around with her ability of double sight seekers, anything like up in the rafters that is probably hiding in darkness or anything. Um, you wish to look up in the rafters. Um, go ahead and make your perception check. Well, I'm going to throw that out there first and then perception. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you can you can see it's just a okay. Um, up in the rafters above, along the ceiling, um, the the ceiling there's a lot of like very intricate carvings and kind of ceiling paintings, and a lot of it is dark. Uh, and against that darkness, um, you know, there's pictures of the uh, the you know there's various depictions. And and now that you're looking up, you're kind of getting a sense of the form of the ninja camel spider moose. Uh, as it's it's largely enshrouded in darkness in a lot of images, it, it has the garb of a ninja uh, and the body of a spider. So there's a lot of like black colors, and, and so you're looking up there, and it's not darkness, but you're, you're seeing strange movement uh, among the kind of ceiling and the paintings, uh, and the movement that you see, you make it, you realize that it's scorpions. There are a whole bunch of what look like fairly large scorpions just kind of like crawling along the ceiling. And Adosho does like look at uh like keep an eye up there goes, uh guys, we have a bunch of scorpion creatures up there. Uh, and they look like I wouldn't even say scorpion creatures. They look like scorpions. They're you know regular they're big but not like large size category. They're tiny, you know, they're they're regular sized scorpions, just big for regular scorpions. They look like normal scorpions to me. They're not uncommon here in the desert. Uh, but I will say, Sword, you do know that they are very uncommon uh, in this space, at least. Um, certainly not amassed as so many, because there are like swarms of them moving up there. That's definitely out of the ordinary. Though I do admit, yes, the the amount of, <laughs> is quite a staggering. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, what else do you guys do? They don't seem to be, they're just kind of like skittering around, and the more that you've noticed them up there, um, you're starting to also notice a lot of them kind of crawling around. Um, crawling around just over the pews and just in the space. Um, anything else you uh, guys want to do? Or are you going to proceed kind of downwards into the, uh, the depths? Ah, uh, time's a waste, and we probably should move on. We don't yeah, want no, that no. thing to get too deep in the labyrinth and try to find a way. Uh, do you want to uh, go through the main entrance to the labyrinth, or do you want to use the one that the, uh, the high priest recommended? We should probably take the uh, the entrance the priest had recommended. Chances are, I know it can go a little deeper in there. We may cut it off. All right. Uh, in that case, you you move over and. Uh, with his instructions, it's it's fairly easy. You uh, pop open the kind of secret chamber, and there's just um, well lit, uh, ever burning torches, and just steps leading downwards into darkness. Very very narrow hallways on either side. They look like they're about the width that exactly that minotaur would be able to walk through, and they're much taller than they are wide. It's very um, unsettling uh, as you move down into the labyrinth beneath. But that is the nature of the minotaur labyrinths. Um, and you all step. What kind of like? What's your like marching order uh, as you're going through? Uh, considering Anna Dolce can actually see 120 feet ahead, uh, she'll probably let everyone know that she'll uh, take a little bit of a lead. But if trouble stirs, uh, she'll give warning to them. Um, all right, you're gonna go ahead and take the vanguard uh, and and look up ahead. And um, the darkness. There isn't a lot of darkness in here. Like I said, you're seeing a lot of like ever burning torches that are aligning the walls. Uh, but you begin uh, marching. Who's uh, who's going next? What's the, the rest of your order looking like? I guess I'll go next. All right, sword, and then um, both Gert and Michelle. Not one to fall behind. Michelle will be close behind the cleric. All right, uh, and then Oathgar, you uh, kind of bring up the rear as you all step downwards and into the um, into the labyrinth proper. Uh, and you begin to traverse. As you walk around you, there are a number of kind of very detailed encryptions and drawings on the walls around you. Uh, Sword, you've never been down these particular corridors. You've, of course, walked the labyrinth before um, in your time here, but you've never walked these, you know, the, um, the Minotaur priests kind of secret, um, secret tunnels and passages. Uh, and they are filled with depictions uh, of you know, holy uh, iconography of the ninja camel spider moose. Um, you see um, 
in that time as you're walking through, uh, it seems to tell something of a story. Um, and it shows uh, just kind of a great plain, presumably the, the deserts of Alabama, and it shows a number of creatures kind of moving around it. Um, you see the, the ninja camel spider moose, and there's just like a whole bunch of them there kind of depicted um, of these ninja camel spider moose. Um, and as you kind of continue forward, you see in the next kind of stage as, as you're following these pictograms, you see the ninja camel spider moose seeming to battle um, some other thing. It just is depicted as a second ninja camel spider moose. Um, it's just this strange, like, eight-legged, uh, horned creature, uh, battling another eight-legged, kind of horned creature, antlered creature, rather. Uh, and, um, you continue forward, uh, and it shows, um, that creature being sort of, uh, cast away, uh, and out of the desert, uh, and kind of slain. Uh, and then it kind of shows, uh, along after that, um, it, it seems to be a picture of your own town, uh, and... Uh, it, it looks like just from like the kind of the downed body of that creature, it kind of shows like a building around it and like almost like a case uh, and whatever that creature was that was once cast down presumably has now broken out of that case. Uh, and as you're reading these and continuing, you reach the end of this kind of single corridor. There's not a lot of turns here. Uh, and as it kind of comes out, it puts you into the labyrinth proper. Um, the corridors are, are very intricate and, and kind of winding. Uh, and as you kind of step into it, you immediately are able to hear sounds like a skittering coming from up ahead in the labyrinth. Uh, just kind of a, a tapping of many legs on hard stone. Um, that's moving up ahead. What do you all do? Uh, and also, uh, hearing this, you might just begin to prepare and use uh, her ability of Trickster's Escape to cast Freedom. All right. Um, you cast Freedom of Movement. Who are you casting it on yourself? Uh, I can only cast it on myself since it's Trickster's Escape. Oh, okay. Um, in that case, yep, you um, imbue yourself with the Freedom of Movement spell. Uh, what um, What else? Uh, does anyone else have a kind of a, a reaction they'd like to do or anything they'd like to do in this moment? And I guess a question also for you, Sword. What is the labyrinth beneath your temple like? I'm curious. Is it is it heavily laden with traps? Is it just very confusing corridors? Uh, like, what's the um, what's kind of the the nature of the labyrinth of your home? It's largely just a maze. Uh, hmm. The the deeper recesses have uh, very very rarely ever been explored by. Uh, most of us because it, it does get dark uh, darker down there and uh, mm. and uh, yes we honestly don't know what's it and the space that you have um uh, the space that you've kind of moved into now um you know the mazes and the corridors there's a lot of you know sharp turns and such uh, but as you're moving through are, are you following after that noise moving away from it hiding it what are, what are the four of you doing i love that sword take the lead on that <laughs> uh, all right uh <laughs> In that case, sword. What are the? What are you doing? Uh, I think I'll go ahead and summon my spirit guardians just to, uh, as a uh, preventative measure. It seems. I'll and, tell you this. It seems like a little bit away. It's not like you're not like on the verge of like running right into it. You can just hear it moving like up ahead, deeper into the labyrinth. Yes, but knowing my uh, being familiar with uh, both scorpions and spiders and those relative creatures they can cling to walls and we never know they may be above us or below us or behind. okay um all right so do you want to like ready your action to like when it comes after you 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 have the spirit right. guardians ready to go so you don't like waste it by accident how uh, high is the ceiling in there the ceilings in here are very high uh the ceilings are maybe like 30 feet high the corridors are maybe only 10 feet wide but they're very tall and the dosha ride lady molly up to the ceiling just right across that um okay yeah you're gonna um go ahead and, and move along the ceiling uh and i guess you guys begin to move forward uh, uh kind of navigating and, and are you trying so i guess my core question is are you trying to catch up to this creature or are you just kind of following it or are you trying to avoid it uh is like my overarching question for the way you're traveling this uh labyrinth right now uh primarily trying to locate it 
Okay, so you're trying to like kind of catch up with it. Uh, in that case, um, I would like you all to. Um, you're going to enter a skill challenge now as you try and navigate the inside of this labyrinth. Um, how do you all go about finding your way? Um, and what skills uh, of yours do you use to uh, navigate the twisting turns of the labyrinth beneath uh, Sword Cohere's temple? Uh, yeah, what uh, what abilities do you want to, uh, to put forth? Using my uh, naturally intimidating and commanding presence, I'd like to whip everyone into shape to get us marching a bit quicker. All right, uh, I think uh, uh, I think that's fair. The forced march. I I have a question. Like, would the labyrinth be considered like part of the city that or wherever uh, we're in? Um, it's, um, part, it's of part of the temple. Part of the temple. So since it's part of a temple, will also be considered part of a city. Um, this um, I would not call this part of a city. Largely, it's largely underground, just beneath the temple. It, it goes deep. Um, okay, so city secrets would not help here. Um, no. Yeah, probably not. Um, I, if you want to tell me what the nature of it, I'm, I'm actually not sure what city secrets are, but I. Um, yes, no, this wouldn't. This would not apply to that because city secrets would be if you knew like the layout of the city. Um, but you definitely don't know the layout of this underground labyrinth. Um, and uh, in this case, though, you, um, Nigel, you begin, what do you say to kind of try and rally the troops? Well, we're here, it's the... Are we not trying to face this thing down? You can look at the scenery and pick your graphs later. March, maggots! Uh, and, Nigel, your, um, your words, while... Well, uh, they're, they're a little bit harsh, uh, and they don't seem to motivate quite enough, uh, as you did not meet the DC of the uh, uh, of the skill challenge. So you have actually one failure as you're moving through, um, and and well, attempting to uh, navigate the inside of the labyrinth. The uh, the lead of the creature uh, can, continues to grow uh, as people aren't motivated. Uh, who else wants to try and uh, use one of their skills? If you can justify how you do so to uh, navigate. Uh, the actually, I do have an idea since I haven't really used anything yet. This is, yeah, I was please. like asking before. But, uh, and I also probably, uh, like get Lady Molly to sniff it out. Yeah, perception, for sure. Um, All right, let go, me, uh, get Lady Molly's thing up. Go ahead and let her, um, uh, make a perception check with advantage. All right, see, so, yep. 14. Um, Wait, uh, let me, uh, oh, you, have, you have advantage. No, I didn't roll that with advantage though. That's for nope, I'm saying you, you still have another uh, you still have another roll. Okay, there we go. Twelve. Okay, a uh, fourteen. That is just barely not enough. Um, the lead on it continues to grow. Molly's having a hard time picking up the scent. Whatever this creature is, it's not leaving a lot behind where it moves. Um, does uh, does anyone else have a um, does anyone else have a, a skill they'd like to contribute? I have a question. Although you're uh, yes, please do. Please ask. Uh, would Wanderer apply here to make sure that we don't end up going in circles? Absolutely. Um, Just for anyone that wants to see what it does. And you can always recall that of terrain settlements and other features around you. Uh, addition, you, oh, well, the fresh food. Uh, you also find some food and water on the lever. Um, no, you have a um, really strong memory, so as you're walking, you're absolutely making certain that you don't get lost. Um, go ahead and make me a survival, uh, or whatever check you would like to make, and because of your Wanderer feature, I'm going to give you advantage on it, because I think that's absolutely relevant. Survival it is. Uh, I figured survival, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and with your expert guidance, you are not going down any of the same paths. Your, your movements are very efficient. Uh, you have two failures and one success. Um, you need to reach three successes before you reach three failures in this particular skill challenge. Um, so, Sword, you haven't done one yet. Do you have a skill you'd like to contribute, or some way you want to uh, navigate the um, the interior of this maze? Unfortunately, I do not have any specific skills or that would uh, um, or items that would benefit us. As someone uh, who has, um, as someone who has navigated this uh, this labyrinth before, um, if you have a way that you can think of, like that, that might benefit you or. I was gonna say I, I would let you maybe if you if you would like to make like a history check to try and recall some of like the space here if you want to do that. Uh, and I'll and I'll obviously I'll, I'll give you um, it, I, I would give you uh, advantage on that as well because this is like I said your labyrinth. 
if you would like to try that. If you have something else, you're welcome to posit that too. What do you think, Sword? Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, the history check's about the best thing I can really do right now, so... Yeah, sure. Uh, go ahead and, um, go ahead and try a history check. Uh, but 20. Um, sword, Oof. your, um, your knowledge, it takes you a little while at first, because you're not quite, um, you're not quite sure about your bearings around you. Uh, but eventually, once you start to kind of figure out where in the maze you are, you are able to guide them up to a certain point, at least. As you said, you've never fully explored the space. And as you get to about the edge of your memory, um, you guys have one more check. Uh, your success on this particular check uh, will determine whether or not you're able to kind of reach this creature before it gets too far within the maze or before it reaches its destination, presumably at its conclusion. Uh, who would like to uh, make the last check as a, uh, a skill that they think is relevant? Well, I do have a question. Uh, uh, who in the party has a very high perception or either a prof uh, proficiency uh, with? You've already used perception, so you have to use a skill that none of you have used so far. Having seen that this is dealing with gods and things counter to gods, I will open up my divine senses to see if I can locate the creature or any of that nasty, desecrated, viscous fluid it was trying. Um, Alright, so you're going to cast Divine Sense. Um, you, uh, as you kind of are feeling around you, the space that you're in is, is consecrated ground. Uh, that is absolutely true. Uh, the, um, the creature that you, um, you don't sense the creature precisely within 60 feet of you, but actually go ahead and make me a, um, since you're also kind of invoking religion, I'll let you make a religion check. Can I get advantage yes, from because divine of, because of your divine sense, you'll have advantage for sure. This is not going as well as I thought. Let's see how our religion goes. Best of luck. 17! Oh. All right. Uh, and as you do kind of open up those, um, uh, as you do kind of open up those senses, you kind of keep moving a little bit. And then feeling kind of the uh, the consecrated ground around you, you almost get a sense of it. And you're almost seeing walls that are outside of, uh, outside of the spaces. You can kind of like feel the consecrated ground. Uh, and with that, you kind of continue to guide them forward uh, catching dead ends before you reach them. Uh, and you can hear that skittering, uh, which at first was receding very quickly, getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, and as you round a corner into a um, kind of a larger, uh, a slightly larger chamber, um, you can see, as you look ahead, you catch up to this creature before it's able to do too much here. Um, <clears throat> you turn the corner and there is a very large creature uh, that is moving into the corridor behind you. Um, are you guys being stealthy, um, or are you just kind of, like, rushing to catch up with it? Uh, and you now sense the... By the way, you also now sense a celestial, uh, now that you are closer to it. Uh, oh, this creature uh -huh. is a celestial being of some kind. Um, what, uh, what do you all do? I guess Anadolia could attempt to stealth. All right. Um. Yeah. Uh, are you guys all trying to stealth? That would that not be the worst well. idea. Uh, all right. I mean, if uh, Anadolia, you can try and be stealthy if you want. But it sounds like most of you are just. I guess Dijel also. You got your kind of heavy armor and your your kind of. Uh, My very armor. quiet heavy armor. Oh, is it Mithril? It is indeed. Oh. Well, uh, in that case, yeah, why don't, why don't you guys go ahead and make stealth checks if you are interested in doing so. And I have that um, that silence charm or whatever. That... Oh, well. Oh, oh never mind. Uh, I forget what it's called. Um, I get you. Assertion charm. Uh, this charm is like when I equip the... It doesn't make a noise. Uh, so yeah, you just go ahead and make a stealth check without disadvantage, even though you got that heavy armor on. Uh, and all right, five. Uh, My brother of the terrible death. Your um, Anadolia and Oathgar, both of you are moving with 
with relative confidence uh, and, you know, stepping pretty quietly along the stone. And Adulsha, you probably... Are you up on the ceiling, Anadulsha? Uh, and Adulsha will probably, like, uh, get down uh, just a little bit to, like, get behind one of the others. Okay. And because, like, that, that's where she... Like, if they're, like, against the wall while moving, she'll probably be moving behind them, like... Um, all right. Uh, and in, in that case, um, you... Uh, are kind of stepping up and then there is a kind of a, a creaking uh just kind of like the slightest um kind of crack of stone is is sword you kind of step and disturb uh, a little bit of the ground uh, beneath you and this very large creature all of a sudden kind of wheels on its many legs uh, and looks around at you and you guys are all still within the labyrinth it has moved into a larger chamber uh, and you can see at the far side of that chamber, there is some kind of very, very large door, it looks like, uh, and kind of slumped over this creature's shoulder, um, you can see the body of what appear to be, appears to be, uh, I believe Lance is an Asamar as you are, isn't he? Correct. Um, slumped over his shoulder, there's the unconscious body of Sword's brother, Lance. Uh, and he kind of looks down into the corridor and sees you... Um, uh, and sees you kind of moving and, and bumbling about their sword. Uh, he catches you as well, Nigel. Othgar, you're still kind of like uh, tucked back uh, around the corner before this kind of part of the labyrinth because you're at the back of the pack. And in Adulture, you're kind of tucked into the ceiling, but he sees the two of you. Um, and to describe the creature, it appears to... Well, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jeremy is going to show this creature on stream because it was recently drawn uh, by one D Forgotten One. Thank you very much for the art. It is incredible. Um, but it appears to be, have the body of, of mostly a scorpion, but it has hooves at the end of its feet uh, and the kind of the, the neck moving up of a llama. Uh, and it wears uh, kind of a, a long straw hat uh, and locked within one of its uh, scorpion's claws, you can see a katana uh, and great antlers uh, that move up and out of the hat uh, as it appears to be some type of samurai llama scorpion stag that stands before you, your brother unconscious in its grasp. Um, uh, and it kind of looks uh, down, uh, it kind of looks down towards you, sword in the gel. Um, and as it does, it says, you foolish mortals, you would stand in the way of my vengeance. I must assume that that is why you are here. First off, return my brother to me so I can beat him into a pulp. Secondly, leave this place. Ah, you must be referring to this. Uh, and he kind of reaches, one of the big scorpion claws reaches up and lifts uh, your brother and is kind of holding him by his, uh, his shirt clothes, um, just kind of up and dangling him in front of him. He's uh, a pretty big creature as well. Uh, and uh, your, uh, your brother now just kind of like hangs in his hand. Ah, uh, yes. I must reward this one in his... Uh, he may not have known what he'd done, but it is his incompetence. That is thanks for my freedom today. Uh, and he kind of, like, takes the body of your brother, uh, which um, it's tough to tell whether or not he's, he's still alive at this point. But he takes him and uh, tosses him over into the... Um, uh, takes him and kind of, like, tosses him over into the corner of the room on the side of the door. I'll deal with him later. What do you all do? You're all kind of like hearing this as well. How far away is it? Um, he's about uh, 20 feet away from you. He's just moved into this room. He hasn't had time to do anything here yet. Because you guys were able to uh, catch up with him. So he's, he's just kind of moving into the room. Um, you are in the hallway. Ogre, you're maybe 30 feet away as you're still tucked around the corner. And Adulsha, you're about the same and up on the ceiling. Uh, but Nigel, you're about 20 feet. Uh, he's well, kind of now beginning to brandish his uh, sword. He wields, it looks like, a massive katana that he puts in between his two giant scorpion claws. Uh, question. Uh, how, how tall does this creature stand? Um, it is a large creature. So roughly 10 feet. Yeah, about right about. Alright, uh, that's all I wanted to know for the moment. Well, good. 
Othgroot is going to activate his boots of the escape artist. Uh, all right, you kind of click your heels together, uh, and the boots prime, and you can feel like the potential energy building up. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, go ahead and activate my spirit guardian since I uh, had that on red. Uh, oh, yeah, you had that ready. To, uh, and, the, and the second you see, because you had a ready to action to use spirit guardians when you saw them, um, the second he sees your spirit guardians comes up, I need you guys to roll for initiative. Uh, I do have a question. My Trickster's Escape is still up. Correct? Um, Trickster's Escape. Uh, was it, Yeah, it wasn't an, it wasn't an hour. Um, All right, we'll make sure. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have a ton of time left, but as far as combat time goes, it's irrelevant. All right. Um. Uh, and in this case, Anna Dolce, uh, as the Samurai Lama Scorpion Stag brandishes his uh, his two-handed katana, you are the first to act. Okay, so Anna Dolce sees this as, hmm, that is a, I'm not sure if that's magical or not, but I don't care. Anna Dolce will, ca- will uh, begin her, her uh, move by casting Elemental Babe. <laughs> All right, what elemental babe are you conjuring? The thunder elemental babe. <laughs> okay, um, you conjure an elemental babe of thunder, uh, and you watch <laughs> as you do so. Um, uh, the um, the creature before you, uh, you just hear. <clears throat> Uh, a loud sound kind of crash in the space, uh, and uh, he's going to make a, a constitution saving throw. Um, and f- just for the record, it appears as a loud gin woman. Um, and just out of um, uh, out of curiosity, or actually, can you just read the Elemental Bane spell to me so I can interpret how this spell works? Uh, I've already posted the elemental bane, so but yes, oh. choose one creature you can see within range, and choose one of the following damage types, etc., etc., etc. Must make a custom. Yeah, it'll take extra, but uh, yeah. And they lose resistance to the spell if they had ele- uh, elemental. And you're doing the thunder babe. Yes. Uh, so the thunder babe <laughs> explodes in the space, uh, and you can see now um, a creature. It, they seem to be almost shimmering in the air, uh, as they are a creature made of pure compressed sound. Uh, as this elemental babe appears, uh, and with her ample hips, uh, she immediately <laughs> uh, swings and hip checks uh, for her thunder, uh, her thunderous blast into the side of this creature, uh, and she's gonna uh, go ahead and make me an attack with your spell attack. Uh, for what this is, what I will say, the right. elemental babe does. Okay, one second. So that just be one d twenty plus charisma. Uh, yes. Uh, well, no spell attack. So one d twenty plus charisma plus proficiency. All right. One well, minute. Okay, so my spell attack bonus is eight. So give me a And he's going to make a constitution saving throw, uh, I assume. Uh, 14. Actually, 14 is going to just miss. Uh, she goes and uh, tries to swing her hips uh, into. Wait, uh, wait. Uh, 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 since that, that, uh, would that also count as a casting from me? Um, yeah, you casted the Elemental Babe spell. Alright, so, um, I'm, uh, just so it'll be able to hit, I'm gonna be using the Coins Toss. Um, alright. Um, go ahead and roll that. Roll that up. And that's where it stops. <laughs> ah, 15. Uh, you needed 16 was your goal. Unfortunately not. The hips <laughs> uh, go to uh, swing in, and unfortunately... Uh, unfortunately, the attack misses. Um, and um, however, uh, because you've summoned the elemental babe near him, he now has uh, no longer has any resistances to thunder if he once had them because he failed to save. And uh, well, the elemental babe, I'm going to say you can control elemental babe like a spiritual weapon uh, and have the elemental babe attack on your turns. Ah, uh, uh, nice. Uh, and that case, uh, that's going to bring us around 
What a wild spell. Uh, that's that's the ring. That's what that ring does, is makes ridiculous things. Uh, Dread Emperor, Nigel Estrada. Nigel, what do you do? Um, actually, no. Oh, never, you know what? Yeah, never mind. Go ahead. Oh, boy, that's... So uh, I will, <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, stride up upon this stag, llama, scorpion, samurai, and well, I suppose you know it's all business in the end. Can I get a charisma saving throw? Charisma save. The twenty-four. Oh, he is most certainly not afraid. Um, yes, you go to, um, uh, you go to kind of frighten him, and, oh, I'm sorry, this was the fear effect, um, he doesn't even make that saving throw, uh, he just kind of, like, stares down at you, as if I would bark at a mere mortal being. And uh, as he says that, off towards the other side where the elemental babe is, suddenly a dark presence forms up as it will try to come at him from a blind. 22. Uh, go ahead and roll damage on that as that absolutely hits. 14. Uh, 14. Force uh, 14 force necrotic. Nice. Uh, and um, that is all for your turn? That'll do it. Uh, in that case, that's going to bring us next initiative to uh, Ogurik. What do you wish to do, Ogurik? Hi. Going to charge in and run in whatever direction I heard and will see Sword's brother being tossed. Okay, um, so you're gonna run around, um, are you gonna run like around the creature? Yes, I'm going to dash and, well, two dashes by effect of the boots. Um, and, uh, all right, yeah, the chamber you're in is, is not crazy big, so with that, um, you have a speed of 40 feet. Um, you can bonus action and move action and get all the way to his brother, and you still have an action. Oh, very good. Then I will pick him up. All right, uh, and you <laughs> sling him up over your uh, very broad shoulders. Um, if you're gonna, uh, well, yeah, you uh, you pick him up. It'll make it a little bit harder to uh, like attack and stuff if you're carrying him. He's pretty bulky. I mean, it's a person you're carrying, it. Uh, but if you're just delivering him, you'll be good. Uh, and so, yep, yeah, you pick him up. And anything else on your turn? I will, if I have any movement left, I will start back towards my uh, allies. Right, you, you can half move because you're essentially grappling a creature. I'll say so. I'll rule this half movement with like a dash action. Very well. Um, all right, so you run over and pick him up, uh, and you're kind of like part way across the room. Uh, and is it all for your turn? Yes. Uh, and at the end of the turn, you see um, he has his uh, he has his katana in hand, the samurai llama scorpion stag. You see him just kind of breathe out uh, and put the sword in the sheath and then all of a sudden the sudden blur of movement movement as he's using one of his uh, legendary actions he invokes the llama's dance uh, as he just kind of steps away from you Nigel and then you just see a f flash uh, and he walks over just for a moment past you Ogre as well uh, as he moves through the space and then as he finishes his movement, he's now in the kind of the middle of the room away from both of you. He kind of resheathes his katana that came out very quickly. And then uh, that's a 29 against you, Nigel, and a 21 against you, Ogre. That hurts. Uh, as he sheathes it, all of a sudden, the second it hits the sheath, both of you all of a sudden feel intense slash wounds about your body as he invokes the llama's dance as a legendary action. Uh, and that is all for that action as we move next to initiative two. Um, uh, that is going to be... Oh, that's the Ninja Llama. That is the Samurai Llama Scorpion Stag. Uh, so he is going to, in that case, uh, now that he's moved away from you, um, he is going to uh, run back uh, at you, Nigel, and go to... Um, go to... Oh, well, that should be... Uh, something else. He's going to go and charge into you uh, with his staghorn since he has gained a little bit of distance. Uh, uh, that's a 19 to hit, Nigel. That was a miss. All right. He goes to uh, crash into you uh, and the uh, kind of like with the immense weight of it, um, you kind of feel it, but you kind of push in front of it uh, and it doesn't knock you down or kind of ends up trampling over you. Uh, but as you're kind of holding on to it, the scorpion stinger uh, whips down overhead and is going to 
he's going to try and sting you as well. Uh, sting, I assume, also misses at 12. Oh, okay. um, and then he kind of looks past um, uh, and uh, he kind of looks past at you, sword, and he just says, your people have seen the end of their days. And he just spits at you with his uh, with his llama split spit attack. Uh, that's a fifteen to hit. I assume that misses. Sword. Miss. All right, you uh, you kind of step out of dodge out of the way of it. Uh, and last but not least, he's going to do his fourth action and katana swing again at Unigel, and that is a nineteen, which also misses. Oof, rough round for the uh, the samurai llama scorpion stag. Uh, as we move now on to sword, it is your turn. Just how many actions does this guy carry? One for each thing that he is. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, how far away is he? Um. Uh, he I mean, is, uh, he's, he's just he's really, Yeah, he's been moving around a lot. He's back kind of up near Nigel, uh, and Nigel had to step in kind of twenty feet to get to him, so he's back to twenty feet. He did kind of basically a circle. He basically ran around in a circle and then got back to the show. Okay. All right. In that case, uh, I'm going to uh, attack his katana um, uh, with my spear hammer. Uh, you're going to uh, you're going to make an attack against him. Yeah. Uh, where is that? 18, unfortunately, is not going to get you there. And then as my bonus action, I'm going to cast a Mass Cure... Or Mass Healing Word. Uh, mass Healing Word, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, so plus five, I think. So 12, uh, 12. Uh, I believe it was Ogurt and Nigel who both had taken kind of significant damage there. Um, so both of you gain back uh, 12 points of healing. Uh, and at the end of your turn, he's going to use another one of his legendary actions, and he's going to use uh, Spinning Scorpion. You see he kind of <laughs> whips his blade out uh, and <laughs> whips in a huge circle, and the scorpion tail kind of extends, and both of you, <laughs> uh, Sword and Nigel, feel it kind of pierce into you. Uh, and I need both of you to make me constitution saving throws. Sweet, sweet, plus three. Wait, is it dex or calm? Calm. Says dex on Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, dexterity saving throw to be hit, and then if you fail, you do the thing. So I'm sorry. Dexterity save, and then a con save. Okay. Um, but sword has a plus three from your presence, doesn't he, Nijo? Indeed. Uh, in that case, Sword, you have a plus three, which means both of you just barely succeed. The stinger pff, goes to stab into both of you, but you, you hang on thanks to that paladin aura. Very powerful here. Uh, anything else on... Well, that's legendary action, so that's all for uh, that. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to bring us then to the top of the initiative, which was Anadolsha. Oh, wait, no, it's... Yep, yeah, that's it. The top of the initiative, Anadolsha. Are right, you saying that my uh, Thunder Babe acts as a spiritual weapon? Um, yep, in this case. So you can use a bonus action to uh, Thunder Babe uh, hip check into a uh, creature if you'd like. All right, so would it also count as the, a fourth level spell in that case? Um, you've already cast the spell. It counted as, do you mean like for some feature that triggers when you cast spells? Uh, no, just for the damage because it says at higher level, uh, it deals uh 1d8 more per level above six. um deals 1d8 or 1d6 more 1d8 more you can target oh at higher level oh for spiritual weapon uh in this case um what level are you so fourth level um no it it doesn't uh it doesn't scale like that with like spiritual weapon but it does do the uh it does do the 2d6 up base and he has now permanently lost any resistances he had to thunder, so he just always has to take the full damage. Okay, so it'll just do two d six. Yeah, uh, but you have to make an attack roll. All right, that's fine. I mean, I just want to make sure. So attack roll was one d twenty plus eight. That's absolutely Ooh. gonna hit. Uh, go ahead and roll that elemental babe damage. It says two d six. So one moment. 
Also, I mean, if you hit it with something that deals thunder damage, it will also be affected like Elemental Bane and take that extra damage again, too. Oh, well, I'll probably save that for later. But yeah, bonus action to this. Is it... Let me see. Okay, is it just a 2d6 or would my charisma also fall? Um, it's a just a 2d6. Um, uh, I will make sure. Yeah, just a flat. flat. Um, so, you take, it takes 7 points of thunder damage uh, as the elemental babe hit checks, but that's just a bonus action. What do you want to do with the rest of your turn? Uh, for my main action, I'm trying to see what else I could do. Uh, that's concentration. I can't use that yet. So, I'm going to uh, just in the uh, in the event it does, I'm going to be casting uh, Cantrip Ray of Frost. Uh, Twelve, unfortunately, will not hit uh, as you go to blast the uh, uh, as you go to blast the Samurai Llama Scorpion Stag with a Ray of Frost. All right. Uh, anything else on your turn? That's all I can do, so I'm just pretty much going to stay here. <laughs> all right, you're hanging up on the ceiling. At the end of your turn, um, they're going to use another legendary action, uh, and they're going to... Um, they're going to... I think they're going to claw at you, uh, Nigel. You see they take one hand off of the katana, uh, one of their claws, and, and go and pff, chomp down on you, Nigel. Uh, it's a 17 is going to miss, however. Uh, and that's all for that legendary action. Uh, as we move next initiative to Nigel, what do you want to do? Well, I apparently need to impress upon this thing that it's not the only one world in a blue. 23 and 26 and 20 are all going to hit. I imagine, and I imagine hurt quite a bit. Oof, uh, that's 22, uh, uh, 35, is that 59? Did I do that right? 22 plus 24 plus 6 plus 7. Uh, I think it was 59. I think I did it right. Uh, Bingo. All right, yeah, you hit it for a pretty significant chunk of damage, uh, and yeah, uh, it kind of <clears throat> uh, it kind of rears back, and uh, you know, it, it seems pretty angry at you. It's it's gesturing its katana uh, once more down towards you. Uh, as we move on to Ogre, you got the body of Sword's brother slumped over your shoulder. What do you want to do? Uh, this time, I will double dash and run straight back towards the corridor I came from. Um, okay, yeah, I uh, moved out of your uh, threat range before, so you're not provoking opportunity attacks or anything. Um, and um, yeah, you run back. Are you jump dumping the um, the body off? Yes. Um, so you get back, uh, and you basically you can dump the body off, and then you'll still have an action left and be at the edge of the corridor if you want to put it down safe. Um, then in that case, uh, wait, I can I can put him down safely and still take an action. Um, yeah, you, you would have to, like, you could dash to get, like, back up in melee if you want. You're not, like, in melee of the guy after the action, but... Mm. I will hang back for now. But right, I will fine. throw a javelin at him. Yeah, that's a javelin. Alright, 16 just hits. Go ahead and roll damage on that. just in range, too. Uh, five points of piercing damage. Uh, it stabs in two and the javelin now sticks uh, out of the uh, the abdomen of this uh, strange scorpion llama. Uh, anything else on your turn? Oh, that, I think that probably does it. As we move now on to the samurai llama scorpion stag's turn, who's going to unleash his bevy of strikes. Um, first, he's going to... Spirit Guardian's damage? Oh, um, I forgot about the Spirit Guardians. That is oh my mistake. Um, he's going to make a wisdom saving throw. So he'll take half of that Spirit Guardian's damage if you want to roll that. Uh, so he just takes uh, three points of damage uh, in this instance. Uh, 
Hold on. Ooh, but, sorry. Just terrible trouble tracking my damage. Alright, he takes three points of Spirit Guardian's damage. Uh, and then uh, whips around. Uh, the katana is going to um, swing at you, Lance. Uh, Lance the person, but that's a nice. the character. 20 is a miss. Uh, what is your armor class? 21. Oof. Uh, in that case, he's going to sting you this time for 24. Uh, and uh, Oof, you just, just barely then. succeed, uh, so you're going to take half damage from that. Um, so you take a total of 24, uh, 12 piercing and 12 poison. Uh, and are you are are you concentrating on something right now? Uh, no, I don't think you are. All right. Uh, in that case, um, that's his uh, st stinger, um, and then he is going to uh, reel back with uh, his. Um, yeah, he's gonna go and uh, spit. Uh, he actually spits over your shoulder and at you in the hallway, Ogre. I need you to make me a con save as he uh, spits at you. Oof, you just barely fail. Uh, and as he gets you, he gets you right in the eye with his llama spit. Uh, and you are blinded until the end of your next turn. Uh, and also, uh, he can just kind of uh, takes the stag horns and uh, fairly ineffectually, without the extra kind of charge up beforehand, uh, he's going to try and bash you with the uh, sword. Oh, oh, but that's an 11, missed. so he's definitely going to miss with a crit fail. Uh, he goes to bash into you, easily knock them aside with the shield, uh, and just, ah, curses! Um, and that's all for the Samurai Llama Scorpion Stag's turn. Uh, so, so we've got sizable turns as we move now to you, Sword. Uh, what do you want to do? I will uh, summon my spiritual weapon with my bonus action. And do 10 points of force damage, and then I'll use my action to take a swing my hammer. Um. All right, uh, all that's going to hit for, oof, uh, 26. And uh, let's not forget my uh, my innate ability to, or uh, my 1d8 from uh, Divine. Um. Okay, uh, yeah, you hit him for the uh, the 1d8 with the Divine Strike, uh, and yeah, that, that chunks him for a pretty good bit. Uh, and um, is there anything else you would like to do on your turn? Yeah, that's about all I can do. Uh, in that case, at the end of your turn, he's going to kind of bear down into you, uh, and <clears throat> uh, he kind of looks down at you. After I'm through with you, I'll run right through the Spider Camel Ninja Moose, too. Uh, and he's going to uh, use his stag's horns with his stag stride uh, as he spends two legendary actions at the end of a turn to uh, stag charge into you. Um, 20, I assume, would hit? Yep. Uh, and he gets the charge instantly. And you should make me a strength save. Oof. Ooh. Uh, he leans down the antlers into you, uh, and in kind of like a blur of motion, like the katana goes out, um, protecting defense from any opportunity attacks that come in uh, as he um, run, rams forward and just pushes you backwards and slams you into the wall uh, as you get knocked back uh, 20 feet and are now prone in the corner of the room. Um, and that's it. Uh, he's just in the corner with you uh, now, and you're kind of prone against the wall in a very rough position. Uh, as we move now on to uh, that's his stag stride uh, as we move on to the top of the initiative which is you and Adolcia alright so seeing all this happen uh, Adolcia will drop the thunder babe and uh, how far is the the creature uh, from me current um, it's Kind of basically right below you, uh, about thirty feet down, because the ceilings here are high. Okay, then with uh, uh, Lady Molly going down, I'm gonna get right behind it and touch it so this could happen. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, let's see, level four. Ooh, uh, what's it going it, to do? Uh, it has to make a wisdom saving throw or become cursed. And the one, the effect I'm gonna choose. Would be, give me a second. Uh, yeah, it would be the third option. 
While Curse, it must make a wisdom saving throw at the start of each of its turns. If it fails, it wastes its action at, at that turn doing nothing. Oof. Oh. Well, it was a critical success. Uh, that's a ter terrifying save for it, but it does uh, it does succeed. Um, as uh, it kind of looks up at you, you doll, I will be a curse on all these lands. Uh, okay, that was oh, that was actually my last spell slot. So yes. let's see if I, I want to see uh, if gonna, I have a bonus. You're gonna sl smack him with the elemental babe. Uh, that required that required concentration, I think. Oh, did you uh, lose concentration before? Yeah, uh, no, I dropped it. it. Says elemental bane requires. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, unless you uh, rule otherwise, as it was a. Uh, I will attack. say that you well, you didn't you could have at least done it before, so you dropped concentration. But I'll say that you did the elemental day uh, attack before, um, you dropped concentration on it. For the all right, so I think it's two d six. All right. Oh, wait, wait, uh, attack rolled in two d six. Yeah, yeah, attack. Ah, God, oh, having rough rough rolls tonight. Uh, yeah, she goes to swing, and then you you drop the concentration later. Um, in that case, um, uh, I'll, I'll just use my remaining ten feet to move away. Um, it's going to provoke an opportunity attack. You cool with that? Yeah, I'm cool with that. All right, it's going to. Uh, I think it's going to opportunity attack you with a sting. Uh, that's a fifteen. Is it targeting me or Molly? You. Me. That would hit. All right, I need you to make me a uh, constitution save in that case. Uh, you succeed, so you're going to take a total of 17 points of damage, 5 piercing and 12 poison, uh, as the scorpion and, stinger <laughs> curses into your uh, doll-bound body. And when it does that, I move as, uh, uh, as far as way I can to uh, the, uh, some other side of my allies. Um... Okay, uh, you're moving kind of with your allies over into the um, uh, over into the space. Basically, you're going over next to Oathgirt and stuff. Uh, I mean, I was around Oathgirt before we moved, so yeah. Pretty okay, uh, so you're basically going back there, and you're also invisible. Um, and you just uh, you hear as you teleport there. <laughs> uh, you just hear him kind of. <laughs> I see you there. Uh, as he kind of leans around and he kind of thinks like, he looks like he's going to go and spit at you, but instead he's going to use a legendary action to attack you, Sword. You're underneath him and prone right now from that last attack. Uh, so he's going to get you with advantage with his katana. That's an 18 to hit. Miss. Ooh, 18 misses. Whew. You guys with that big AC. Close call. Yep. Um, and that's all for his turn uh, as or his legendary action as we move next to the initiative to Nigel. I will slung my spiritual weapon over towards him. Da, 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 moving at the top. Is he within 20 feet? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he only moved 20 feet. Oh, yeah. I'll swing that over to get him with the spiritual weapon. Just to be clear, the room's not very big here. The room's only 40 feet. So. Uh, 15 actually will miss. Ah, just so, just so. And then I will shoot him. Ah, uh, bad luck. Um, you go to catch him with the and spiritual then weapon. I and will the shoot him. Ooh, uh, you guide your pistol strike. Go ahead and roll damage on that. 19. Oh, 26. 26 points of damage. Um, yeah, he is not looking happy about that one. Uh, it kind of pierces through the carapace. Uh, and you can see just behind as it like breaks through some of the scorpion um, outer shell. Uh, within, there's just writhing darkness. Uh, whatever is, you know, this is a, a celestial being of some kind. Um, anything else on your turn? That should do it for me. Um, all right. In that case, uh, the um, that's going to bring us to Oathbert. What do you want to do, Oathbert? Sword's brother is to safety. Now begins the bloodshed. I'll tell you, I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling the rage. The frenzied rage. Ooh, all right. Blindness will not halt me. I can hear you. 
I can smell you, vile creature. I will recklessly bombard him. All right, so you will not attack with disadvantage, but just make straight up attack rolls against him. Uh, as you uh, fly into your frenzied rage, you dash across the room towards... Uh, go ahead and make your attacks. Twenty-three will hit, but the thirteen will not. Uh, you land one strike. Uh, well, uh, the um, the bone halberd kind of coming down and and landing immediately. Uh, the second one is you swing it around again, um, without the full focus of your attention on it. You see the um, uh, the katana kind of comes up and, and intercepts. Um, uh, but he's going to take a cool eleven damage. Um, is there anything else on your turn, Othrur? That is all this time. Uh, yes, you've entered your full battle mode, though, uh, as uh, it moves now on to the turn of the... Um... Nigel? Oh, yeah, you went with the... You attacked with the pistol. Okay, I didn't know that. I might skip you for a second. Oh, okay, it moves on to the um, Ninja Camel Spider Moose's turn, uh, and... Oh, no, Sword, you are still on the ground before him. Uh, so he's going to go after you with the Stag Horns. That's a 22. That's uh, not it's... the... It's not the extra damage because he didn't charge for it, so it's just seven points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, and then I think he's um, the stinger <laughs> uh, whips out behind him and is going to go after you, Ogre. Uh, Twenty-one um, Constitution save. Um, that is just barely not enough. Um, you are going to take. Wait, uh, am I near in the gel? Uh, I am. Yeah, you went up from the moment. Uh, oh, that's not close enough, is it? He has reach, so he's just outside of my aura. Uh, that's yeah. Unfortunately, you are not uh, you are not able to get uh, you're not able to get within the range. So you're going to take the full a uh, half of the eight, but the full twenty one points of poison damage, uh, and then the katana <laughs> swings downwards at you with advantage. Uh, it's a nineteen to hit sword. Does a nineteen get you? Nope. Ooh, just barely oh dodging. Just barely. Uh, as oh, the sword catches the stone right near you. Uh, and then uh, he kind of whips around and looks at you, Nigel, and spits at you. Oh, oh I am spat upon. Uh, you take one acid. Con save. I will willingly fail. Really? Why not? Huh. All right. All right. Blind rage is blind. Uh, you, you got me, Nigel. You, you've you've intrigued me with your choice here, um, uh, and that is um, that is all for his turn. Uh, that's going to bring us next to now. It's uh, you there on the ground, sword, sword. You're finally oh, able to stand up. Uh, yes. I think he might have been in my range since I was twenty feet away to shoot him, and if he's attacking ten feet away with the halberd. He would be ten feet away from it and ten feet away from me at the edge of it. Um, that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, you so you would have had advantage. He'll take half of the poison damage. Uh, so he'll take only ten points of poison damage. So eighteen total is what you should have taken there with Kurt. Um, and that is going to be all for his turn. As we move now, sword, you're finally able to stand. Um, can you make me a concentration check? How many you were hit once, sword? So I need you to make me a. Or actually twice because the initial attack. So I need you to make me two concentration okay, checks. Okay, well, just to see if okay it goes down. So he wouldn't have um he wouldn't have been affected by the spirit guardians on the start of his no. turn. Uh, and it's your turn. You're able to stand if you wish. All right, I will uh, use my bonus action to throw out another mass uh, healing word. All right. I don't know why it doesn't add in my level on that, but um, but it's, an extra it's like ha it's like half my level, right? Uh, I don't know Two how plus that. Two plus the spells level. Um. All right, then it's an extra five. All right, so you all um, all of you gain thirteen points of healing. Uh, can you target everyone with it? That's six people, I think. Yeah, so everyone yeah. gains thir thirteen points of health, uh, and then. Uh, what else do you want to do, Sword? That's your bonus action. You still have an action and a move action. 
Um, I'm gonna stay where I am. Do you want to stand and, up at least? So I, doesn't... Yeah, well, I'm gonna stand up, but I mean, I'm yeah. gonna stay relative where I am and take another swing at him since he's right. All right, fire away. Fifteen just misses. Ah. ah. Um, is that all for your turn? Yeah, that's gonna be all for my turn. He's going to use the llama's dance again, uh, and you're all in just basically a 20-foot line right now as he's going to spin around, moving agilely. His movements, they cannot be traced as he sheathes and unsheathes his uh, his katana. As he uh, reaches the end, he makes an attack against each of you. Uh, that's a 12 against you, sword, which misses. Ogre, that's a 16 against you. Does 16 hit you? It beats my armor. Uh, just hits then in that case. So you'll take only seven points of slashing damage. Uh, and then, oh, Nichelle crit fails against you. Uh, just <laughs> bounces. Uh, no, he has advantage because you're blind. But I'm not blind. Why? Because no one can hide from their ruin. Ah, uh, this is true. Uh, in that case, he did have, uh, uh, he did not have advantage on you, so he missed either way anyway, so... It's all good. Uh, and he ends his turn, because it's exactly half his movement to get to you, uh, Nigel. Uh, he ends his turn right adjacent to you, or ends his legendary action, uh, as we move next in initiative to Ad Anadolsha. It's your turn. Oh, so I was in that range. Good. <laughs> yeah, you were... Um... Oh, wait, you were next to Nigel, weren't you? I was... Uh, I, I, chose, I, I teleported as far as back, but around, like, where... Uthgar was before he moved. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, that's that's what we said. Yep, yeah, you're good. You weren't in that range. All right, we'll make sure. Okay, so uh, since I'm back here, uh, wait, how far is, uh, well, uh, never mind, uh, the ninja uh, is next to the jail now, right? Yep. Okay, so uh, while, while moving around, I'm going to touch the jail. Uh, well, I'm pretty much uh, uh, moving uh, on Molly, uh, going right by uh, behind the jail while touching him for this right quick. So yeah, uh, uh, give him that, and uh, just continuing on to where Sword is, and uh, that's pretty much in my turn. Um, all right, uh, you uh, cast this resistance. Uh, and then we move on to Nigel. What do you want to do, Nigel? First, as part of his pirate costume that he has toned down a bit from its more ostentatious first appearance, he will untie the green bandana from his left arm and tie it around his arm. You cannot hide from your ruin this day. And I will bring around my spiritual weapon to start. Um... All right, uh, go ahead and uh, make me a uh, couple of attack rolls there. Uh, the 25 and the 23 are going to hit. The 11, unfortunately, will miss. For 17. And then 21. Oh my god, so much damage. Um, oh, that's a, uh, that's a high level smite. Uh, Indeed. Um, just so I just so I know what you're doing, if you could just tell me when you're smiting, so I don't don't just see the damage and I know like what it's from. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, no, worries. It's, it's not a big deal. One first level smite or two first level smites the round before I shot, and this is the first second one. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's just always there's just always so much uh, going on when you do this. Uh, so seventeen plus an extra twenty one for. 38 points of damage, another huge chunk, uh, and this creature's starting to look maybe a, a, a little bit beat up. It's, it's definitely wounded at this point. Um, is there anything else on your turn, Nigel? That'll do. Uh, in that case, uh, it's going to use, I think, a legendary action to attack the only one it can, which is you, uh, and it's going to use its its claw to attack you, but a 13 will miss, and it's rolling very low despite these seemingly high numbers. Uh, and we're going to move now on to... Um, we're going to move now on to Uthgarert. What do you want to do? I do believe I can see again. You can see, you can fight. And I'm seeing red. All right. I'm going to position myself near Nigel. 
but near enough to the foul scorpion samurai claw mustag creature <laughs> that I can strike it. Um, all right, you uh, get in range. I will recklessly strike it once more. Uh, swing away, please. Oof. All of those are going to hit. Roll off. <laughs> Roll that sizable damage. Um, that is going to be a total of 11. Too much math. Uh, 27. 27 plus 34. Yeah. Uh, no, 27. Sorry. Plus, 27 yeah, plus 30. Uh, 30. So 50, 57. Wait, what? Just 57, right? 27 plus 30 is 57. I think you added a couple extra numbers in there somewhere. Well, you got too happy being able to type six plus nine. <laughs> um, I think it's fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. It's fifty-six. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, great. Uh, in that case, um, yeah, this creature takes this incredible bevy of blows uh, as the halberd <laughs> swings around, cutting off more and more chunks of armor. Uh, and you can see within it again is bits and pieces of bits and pieces of the creature being hacked away uh, the inside of the creature just to this like almost purplish almost black light is just pouring out of it and striking at the walls uh, in kind of strange angles where it's kind of falling apart and being chipped away at um, and it's looking at him no you will all bow before me and then I will see to the ninja camel smiter moose I will smote it upon the ground and I shall be the one revered uh, and um, it's gonna move on to its turn, and Oathgur, you just hit it pretty hard, uh, and you are very vulnerable, uh, as a result of it, so it's just gonna focus right on you right now, uh, and it's gonna sting you with, uh, Stinger, that is a 21 to hit. That's uh, it. It's a con save. Um, that is unfortunately a failure, uh, as... You're going to take that full four points of piercing damage and then 27 poison damage oof, for 31. Be, uh, wouldn't the piercing be halved? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's two. Uh, so 29 total. Um, and then it's going to hit you with its... Uh, it's going to swing at you with its katana as well. And that is a... Well, that's a 29. Uh, but it's the first damage that we use because that hit... Uh, so eight points of slashing damage would they have? Because you said sixteen matches, correct? Or well, it's twenty-nine anyway. Um, so yeah, eight points of slashing damage. Are you still standing? Yes. Are you even close? You said that very confidently. I just assumed uh, you were lower than you were. No, I'm low, but there is confidence in being a barbarian at all. All right, he hits you for two more bludgeoning damage with the stag horns, uh, and then he wheels around and looks at you, Sword Co. here, and is just going to spit at you. <laughs> For 23, you take one acid damage, and I need you to make me a con save. Oh, you succeed on the Ooh. constitution saving throw, and you are not blinded. Uh, as he, he spits on you, but it gets on your arm and not in your eyes, like he seemed to intend. Uh, and uh, that is all for his turn. Uh, Othgar is probably in a bad spot right now. Um, as we move next to sword your turn what do you wish to do all right uh in that case i'm going to uh use my channel divinity ability to uh heal uh of course up to half his health uh let me Ooh. see what was the rest um so you can heal an amount equal to like five times your level or ten times your level or something like that yeah, and but I can only heal up to a maximum of half their max HP. Um, so how much and healing? How much healing is the total? Well, uh, my level's nine, so it'd be forty-five. All right. Um, how much of that can you use, Othgar? Because I assume other people need it too. Uh, could you repeat that number one more time? I'm sorry. Forty-five. Forty-five. 45. Uh, one moment. Have to do some math here. The Samurai Lama Scorpion Stag. 
looks on menacingly. 20 of it. Um, all right. You gain 20 points of healing. You have 25 more points to give out. Is anyone else below half? I'm not below half. I, uh, I'm just down by four points. Nor high. Uh, in that case, uh, you gain 20 points of healing as sword. You use your, your healing spirit. Um, uh, does Nigel need it? I'm Nigel? above half. Thanks to that dope ass, uh, mass healing word. Yeah, you've been on the, you've been on the healing train this round. Um, so that's your, uh, that's your action. Is there oh, he, he does some punishing moves, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. they, they, when they land, they really hurt, so. <laughs> Uh, anything land. else on your anything else on your turn sword you got a bonus action still uh i'll use my uh spiritual weapon all right you move it over and whack him and it's gonna hit nice round uh for eight um and uh sword uh as you kind of whack him for eight the head kind of whips around uh and as he sees you kind of healing everyone he focuses once more on you uh, and the Samurai Llama Scorpion Stag is going to use a legendary action at the end of your turn, and you stag stride again. Uh, I need you to make me a strength so Strength saving throw. Oof, you are going to fail, uh, which means you are going to take uh, 17 points of damage uh, as he just kind of wheels around and pff, smacks into you, uh, and you are once again knocked prone as well. Uh, this one's that's also a tough DC because it's based on his strength. Um, so the the stag horns just come down and slam you once and more into the wall. Uh, you take 17 points of damage and you are once more knocked prone. Uh, and at the samurai line, llama, scorpion, stags, mercy. <laughs> um, so moving all over the place. That's top of the initiative and Adolcia. What do you want to do? Uh, sitting I'm right next to sword. Uh, uh dang. Part of me wants to use an action for him, but at the same time, it's kind of hard so but uh you said that we're uh that chunks of it is, uh, is exposed like the um, inner darkness you were talking about yeah absolutely i am targeting that inner darkness with uh my uh fate well what is uh so it's, it's eldritch oh, blast, you're, uh, eldritch blast. uh you blast uh kind of motes of it sounds like motes of water uh, actually, it's, it's just like uh, it's not. It's more like a fairy. I guess you could call it like sort of fairy light. energy. Yeah, yeah pretty absolutely. much fairy. Um, so you <laughs> fire these bolts of energy uh, and they strike, and yeah, you're you're chipping away even more, uh, more and more. It gets kind of revealed as you hit it for five force damage, and yeah, he's starting to look a little. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of falling uh, apart. It's tough to tell. Yeah, like I said, I was targeting right inside that darkness in its shell. So. Yeah, uh, and, and the hole is kind of now widening as a result. Um, anything else on your turn in Uh, I'm just gonna like probably pull out a potion and sit right next to sword. Oh, all right. Um, you just get down next to sword, um, and you move up close to sword. Uh, that's all for that turn. Um, he still has an action left, and I, I think he's going to swing down with the katana uh, at you and Adolcia since you've walked into range to be next to sword, and he's right next to sword. Um, Susan uses legendary action. 29, I assume, hits you for 15? Yeah, that hits, for sure. Um, all right, yeah, you take a pretty meaty katana swing there uh, as we move on to your turn, Nigel. What do you want to do, Nigel? As he's 20 feet away, I will send my spiritual weapon to uh, Pong after it's already smack, pinged. Smack away. Okay, it stays up, Ian. All right, good, good. Um, and that's going to hit. Roll damage. For another 12. Oof. And Chip then away. I'll run that 20 feet over to continue the arm. Um, this oh, will be my last second level spells. The um, the 26 hits, the 12 does not. Uh, but another 30 damage. Oof. Uh, that's 47 total in the, or I'm sorry, 42 total in that round. Uh, another pretty sizable chunk. Uh, and yeah, uh, more and more uh, pieces of him are kind of breaking away. Uh, and he's just kind of looking down at you. This is impossible! I could not! The Samurai Lama Scorpion Stag is greater than any mere mortal! Um, I'm no mortal. I'm the Dread Emperor. You crap. Uh, and that's going to bring us to Ogret. Ogret, what do you want to do? You've just taken a nasty hit. Everyone's kind of piled in the corner with this guy. 
This is no time for cowardice. I will show you this is not mortal rage, but the fury of all that you have wronged and all that you have hurt. Feel the pain! Three more reckless attacks. All right, swing away, Oathgarut. Big, big swings. Oof. All hit. One of them crits. I'll roll that damage. Um, that's going to be 7, 7, 14, 17, 31, 14, 55. Oof. Uh, wait, no, 45. There we go. You hit him for 45 uh, points of damage uh, as you uh, swing the bull halberd around, more and more pieces of him breaking off. Uh, he seems to be barely held together. There are places now where you've tacked at the legs uh, and you just see that kind of like darkness spilling out and you don't even see any of the scorpion carapace anymore. Uh, and that kind of continues further down, uh, separated by whatever cosmic forces keep this strange creature together. Uh, it's on death's door, it looks like. Um, is that all for your turn, Oathgarut? Yes. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, the creature is going to uh, unleash his his full fury. He's going to whip around and use his blinding spit at you, Oathgarut, which misses. Um, he's going to um, sting uh, and Adolsha. He's going to use his stinger on you. And you should make me a constitution saving throw. <laughs> you succeed. Uh, so you only take half of that, but it's still a pretty sizable chunk at... Um, 18 total? Yep, 18 total damage. Um, the Staghorn's sword, that's with advantage. Uh, that's going to be 9, not the full, because he's not charging. Uh, and then the uh, the katana's coming down at you again, sword. Oh, that's 20. That's 29 to you, sword. You still up? Nope, I am down. Oof. Uh, you watch as uh, sword falls, uh, and at the end of um, uh, at the end of the creature's turn, um, sword. I need you to make me a death saving throw. Oof! You creep a little bit closer to death, uh, and at the end of your turn, he's going to use his legendary action to uh, swing around and use his uh, spinning scroll. I need all of you to make me dex saves, because all of you are currently in range. Of this effect. Uh, the, that would be minor advantage, yes? Uh, yes, uh, this is the source you can see. Um, so, yep, you succeed, Nigel, you succeed, uh, and Adolsha, you do not. Um, all of you are. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry, only. Um, uh, only uh, in Adolsha. So, in Adolsha, now I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. Uh, you don't take the piercing damage, it's just a light scratch, uh, and you take half of it, so you take um, eight points of poison damage uh, as the scorpion sting whips around in a circle, and the gel, uh, uh, <clears throat> the gel and Oathgrood are able to duck out of the way, but you take the brunt of it. Um, so yeah, that's another eight poison damage to you, and this creature is, is again on death's door. Um, so your allies poison, have... uh, what about the piercing? Is that just neglected, or...? Um, the, um... The piercing doesn't happen in this particular instance. It's all right, all right. Oh, yeah, I'm down in single digits right now. Oof. Uh, Nigel. Um, I'm sorry, no, Anadolsha, it's your turn. Um, and I believe you were actually ready in action to, like, you were, like, going to give sort of potion, weren't you? Yeah, pretty much. Which, uh, even though I'm, uh, I guess I'm blinded, uh, I'm still going to just do that. Uh, you're not currently blinded. Oh, uh, even with that failed deck save? Um, yeah, no, oh, that that's poison. not the effect that blinds you. That's the poison, not the, uh, oh, okay, okay, my bad. not the spit. All right, so yeah, yeah, I'll give, uh, him the, uh, the potion. All right, um, go ahead and roll that healing. Uh, is it 2d4 plus 2? Is it a regular healing uh, potion? Uh, no, it's a greater. Ooh, all right. Uh, 4d4 plus 4. Go ahead and roll that. Oh, never mind. Um sword, you are revitalized at 17 hit points uh, as Anadolsha, the small doll, is leaning over you, pouring the potion betwixt your lips. Um, and and, 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 and Anadolsha will just, like, kind of line up against the uh, wall with, uh, probably Molly right in front of her. Alright, yeah, kind of taking, you, you get sword up and then kind of take cover behind sword and Molly. 
Um, yeah, since Molly uh, it does count as a creature that's larger than me, uh, I think it was... Yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it to you. Uh, um, kind of got cover behind Molly uh, as we move yeah, uh, next to initiative. Uh, to Nigel. Nigel, what do you want to do? I can keep that thing going. We start this out with spiritual weapon before my own blade. <sighs> Will not hit. Oof. Uh, the last one does. Hey, and I use my last first level spell slot. Toss the smite on. Um, that's a lot of damage for one hit. Oh, which ignore is... the eight. For some reason, it always activates that. It's just um, the uh, four, nine, seven. Okay. Um, so, okay, in that case, uh, 20 points of damage total. Um, not enough to finish it off, but uh, another strong hit uh, as the, the creature is nearing its demise. Um, you swing with the scythe. Uh, the energy kind of cuts through. <laughs> oh, Gerard. Actually, you know what? At the end of... Um, you know what I think happens? At the end of its turn, uh, it's going to use its legendary action, and it's going to just move half its movement without provoking opportunity. This doesn't have, like, an extra effect on it. It's just going to do that flat. Uh, and it uh, sidles and begins climbing up the side of the wall, um, and it gets 20 feet up. So it's 20 feet up the wall. Uh, at the end of its, at the beginning of your turn, Oathgurt, what do you wish to do? I have a really stupid question. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm here for. The boots of the escape artist are still active, right? It's not been a full minute. That's correct, sir. Can I? do a running jump to gain some height and try to grapple it by its leg? Um, you'll have to... I need you to make me an athletics check both for the maneuver, and then you'll try and grapple it. Okay. But I'll let you try this. Okay. I'm using the bonus action dash to gain some speed for this. Yes, I think that's what's allowing you to, to make this <laughs> incredible high leap. Uh, cause it's, it's righteous as hell. All right. 25 athletics. Uh, absolutely. Now go ahead and contest it with your grapple to see if you're able to hold on and drag him down. Ah, you go to grab onto him and the leg, you, you wrap around it for a time. You go to like pull down and you're holding on to him. Uh, and you're kind of, uh, oh wait, yes, you have advanced. Oh, 24. I forgot about the rage bonus. You beat him by one. Uh, correct. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the insight there. Um, uh, 24, you uh, pull down the wall. Uh, grapple's one of your attacks. You still have one attack remaining as well. I'm limited to one-handedness, I think. Um, yes, as you are currently grappling. I need to check something real quick. Uh, okay. I'm just going to drop the halberd and right. recklessly attack with... A hammer that definitely should not be used as a weapon by any the logic, by any logic, but reckless attack with forge hammer. All right, fifteen. Uh, fifteen, unfortunately, will miss. Um, oh wait, yep, yeah, yeah, fifteen misses. Um, and you go to swing down. The creature's on death's door, though, and sword. Uh, you stand once more. You are. Uh, you arise. Um, the creature is, is beat up and in front of you. you Oathgurt's there grappling it, and it's on the verge of just bringing you all down once more. Uh, what do you want to do, Sword? Well, I told him to leave this place and leave my brother be. So now he shall face the light. Oof! A flame strike. Um, he fails and takes a full 27 points of damage um, he was at 18 health uh, sword would you like a, to describe your killing blow on this creature as we uh, sit, uh, stand there before him we hear him writhing in pain as the pillar of flame and light erupts from the ground beneath him uh, and Burning him a sun. Uh, 
uh, yes, and those like fragments of light that were starting to come out of him, uh, all of the kind of form of his body <laughs> uh, rips apart uh, and kind of scatters, and that light uh, flies about the room, seeming to ricochet and have physical form uh, before it kind of uh, just kind of collects uh, in a pool in the middle of the room. All that seems to be left of this strange creature is just this odd um, kind of chunk of of wormling energy as the flame strike <laughs> courses up to the ceiling uh, from Sword's final spell here. Uh, and <clears throat> with that, the creature kind of lays uh, defeated um, and kind of staggering into the room, um, uh, kind of staggering into the room from behind, um, you can see your brother, uh, Lance, now kind of regaining consciousness, walks over and looks at you. Sword. Sword, I'm... I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have taken this. Uh, and he kind of produces from within just the very small... Uh, the very small relic uh, that he had stolen that was presumably the seal that was over the statue in the temple. And he produces the, the small kind of, like, uh, moose antlers uh, that were the holy relic of your temple. I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, yeah. Apologize to the temple uh, elder. I, don't I take the... I and I take the antlers away from him and place them on the uh, pile of goop. Um, all right, and as you kind of uh, do that, you, you bring them down, and, and you're walking over to it, and then all of a sudden, that door, that very huge door that was on the far side of this room, uh, begins to uh, open up, uh, and behind it, you're all just suddenly blinded by a powerful and brilliantly bright light uh, and sword that light seems to uh, collect on the uh, collect on the small kind of crown of antlers that you're holding uh, and that light shines and kind of refracts downward and um, shoots into the goop just kind of uh, casting it away and banishing it into shadows uh, and as the light from behind this door kind of settles um, slowly Slowly your eyes adjust to the brightness uh, from the relative darkness of the deep labyrinth. And before you, you see an open space that appears to lead outside to a great desert. What do you all do? And Dolce is like staggering up onto Lady Molly because she's still pretty hurt. Uh, excellent. Um, so you kind of hop up onto... Uh, you hop up into Lady Molly. Well, Forge uh, Master, seems the second would be god we've defeated. Um, I just try to get my bearings where we are in the desert. All right, yeah, you, you step out and you're trying to find your bearings, but this isn't a desert that you seem to know. Uh, or, or recognize at all. Uh, and kind of trampsing through it, you see all manner of creatures, all of them large and strange. You see some kind of, um, you, you see some kind of, it looks like a knight, but it's like a knight horse beetle rhino. And then a creature that looks like some type of, it, it looks like a berserker donkey daddy long legs like a berserker, like a berserker donkey, daddy long legs, antelope, kind of just running and grazing, and all of these giant, four-thinged creatures are running around, just kind of trampsing through the field. But your eyes fixate on one walking towards you, a figure of an immense size with just a golden aura that seems to radiate from around it, the king of four being beings. The ninja camel spider moose. It's in its ninja mask catching the sunlight and kind of irradiating and flitting about the space. Its antlers tall and glorious. Uh, its moose like face and many legs uh, scurrying up towards you as it looks at you. Sword! I've been trying to talk to you. I'm glad, glad you. you're here now. Uh, as the ninja camel spider moose uh, looks before you. Sword! You have saved both your brother and your town and me. He was an ancient of our kind, we the beings of four. However, we cast him out. He chose not to live in the deserts of Alabama, 
but tried to turn our land into an entire swamp. Uh, it was a terrible time for us, but now we are truly free of that terrible, terrible creature. Thank you, sword. Thank you. And it just kind of lets out an incredible bellow uh, of this kind of moosey, uh, this moosey roar almost. It's just whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, puts its head up in the air, and all throughout the plains, all of these strange four-being beings uh, all kind of let out their own cacophonous sounds uh, as they celebrate your arrival. Uh, and he kind of uh, uh, kind of reaches down, and with uh, the end of his uh, moose-like nose, he just kind of touches you on the forehead uh, and says, Thank you, sword. Please keep that relic as a token uh, and uh, he says, and for as long as you wish, you may walk the true desert of Alabama uh, as you have been transported to the demi plane that is the desert of Alabama. Um, and with that, uh, I don't know how much time you spend here or what you do here, uh, but regardless, um, eventually each of you uh, make your way back up to the village and, and out of this strange place, closing the door to the celestial realm behind you. And each of you, in doing so, gain a point of experience. I'm sorry, two points of experience. <laughs> and 300 Bartholomew bucks. And thank you all very much for playing in this ridiculous <laughs> Samurai Llama Scorpion Stag adventure. <laughs>